I'm Dana Stabenow, and this is the Kate Shugak series, Abridged. A Cold Day for Murder. Alaska Alu Kate Shugak returns to the family homestead after five and a half years investigating cases for the Anchorage DA. 18 months later, her ex-boss Jack shows up, looking for a missing park ranger. Big ugly scar on her throat. Big badass dog at the door. Big sexy love scene at the end. A fatal thaw, a massacre, a murder, belly dancing in the roadhouse, basketball in the gym, witch's coven in the woods. Jim kisses Kate, Bobby kisses Kate, Jack kisses Kate, woo woo, dead in the water. Kate goes undercover on a crab boat in the Bering Sea. Have any of those wimps on the deadliest catch ever killed anybody with a boat hook? I don't think so. A cold-blooded business. Kate goes undercover in Prudhoe Bay to crack a drug ring. Turtles race at the base camp. Two women sell $20,000 worth of magazine subscriptions in two days, and duct tape is used to fix the Trans-Alaska Pipeline. Is this any way to run a mystery novel? Play with fire. Kate picks morel mushrooms and finds a body. High ew factor. Also, author crucified for Pastor Seabolt's sin. Non mea maxima culpa. Blood will tell. Nanelma Native Association board member killed in Anchorage. Kate goes to Anchorage. Kate goes to Nordstrom. Kate dresses up. Emma joins Calmwater's daughter and the woman who keeps the tides. Break up. Bears. Lots and lots of bears. They wake up. They kill somebody. But did they act alone? Mandy's parents come to call. George, Ground Loops, the Super Cub. The Jepsons and the Krugers shoot up the roadhouse. Oh yeah, and a 747 drops an engine through Kate's roof. Killing grounds. Cordova Harbor Master shitting seagull lets aliens dock their spaceships in transient parking. Enough said. Hunter's Moon. George, Old Sam, and Kate take rich Germans hunting. Jack dies. Get over it. Midnight come again. Kate is missing. Chopper Jim finds her working for an air cargo outfit in Southwest Alaska. Jim lands a hurt. Kate and Mutt return to the park to find Jack's son, Johnny, on their doorstep. The singing of the dead. A hundred years ago, a good time girl wearing only a length of white chiffon dances for the gold miners in Dawson City. Today, Kate works security for a political campaign. A campaign researcher is murdered. Jim has competition. Wait, what was that about the good time girl? A fine and bitter snow. Someone kills a much loved park rat. Someone else is trying to get Ranger Dan fired. Kate beans Jim with a file cabinet. Jim throws Kate down on the nearest horizontal surface and has his way with her. A grave denied. Johnny finds the park's go-to guy's body under a glacier. Johnny keeps a journal with clues. Somebody burns down Kate's cabin. Jim swears off Kate. It's so not happening. <laughs> a taint in the blood. Kate is hired to prove that a lifer with cancer didn't try to kill her two sons 30 years before. Kate gets dressed up. Again, somebody tries to bribe Kate. Kate gets pissed. Kate gets shot at. <coughs> Mutt gets pissed. Kate gets kidnapped. Jim gets pissed. Kate turns it on. A deeper sleep. Park badass murders park rats and then is murdered himself. Mutt gets shot. Kate lies to Jim. Jim lies to Kate. The aunties lie to everybody. Whisper to the blood. Highwaymen are attacking snowmobilers on the Kanayak River, and gold is discovered in the park. Again. A night too dark. The Salutak mine moves into full-time exploration, and the aunties, to a woman, sell out. It's almost a relief when Kate finds a body. Though not dead, from beyond the grave, Old Sam sends Kate on a scavenger hunt that takes her a hundred years into Alaska's past. Restless in the grave, Liam Campbell returns.